Hi everybody, I'm about to do a Soul Rebirth Journey session. And this session, we're gonna be exploring some vulnerable stuff. Uh, the client is going through some hardship here. So psychic attack experiences um, with alien beings, okay? This client, I actually shared a alien implant removal session just a few weeks ago. And I'll put a link out for any of you that might be interested in watching that session. So in that session, it was quite, quite clear there's a lot of hardship going on. Um, and that session then prompted now this session to continue the work um, to alleviate this experience. So I'm going to go ahead and relax and we'll see what's going on here. And see what all we can discover, what all we can release from your energy field. And um, some tips to help you um, conquer this thing, okay? So. Okay. This is a, a lot of sadness and I mean there is a face right in my face from the get go and there's spots though on the cheeks like really massive black freckles and the face looks like Gollum you know from Lord of the Rings the movie Gollum with the big eyes and he's kind of been morphed and changed by the ring you know the precious. Um, and it turned him into a monster. He was once a hobbit, you know, and now he's this golem creature. And I see this face uh, right here looking into my face, right at the surface of your energy field with these really big black splotches here. And in a way, it's almost like you're the one enduring um, this horrifying transformation, kind of like what Gollum had to go through when he found the ring. I mean, he kills his best friend and transforms. Um, it's not about the actions that happened here. It's about how the ring tra changed him um, and the experience of change and how change can be so um, brutalizing, horrifying. I always think about Gollum and try to make sense of how any soul could have endured that experience. So I have an admiration for Gollum. Now, for this Gollum face to be here, um, I mean, the eyes are big and they're so full of sadness. And it's like, take this torture away from me. Um, relieve me of this burden. And... Because you you have been so stretched thin, um, unnaturally stretched thin. That's that is very clear here. I mean, this is so unnaturally stretched thin. Just a moment here. There's a really, I mean, major pocket, huge, major pocket of energy and. Oh man, it's acidic. And if I touch it, because we want this pocket of energy to release, okay? Um, so when I touch it, it burns my hand because it's it's there because of pain and suffering. Um, and then it wants to dissolve, but when it dissolves, it puffs all this black soot into the air. There's a lot of electrical lightning bolts um, in and around here. Oh man, is this rough. There's so... <laughs> This is interesting, but there is uh, in this room, in the center of this room, a ring. It looks nothing like the one ring, the precious. Um, it looks like a wedding ring. It's very pretty. It's got very pretty diamonds on it. I'm looking at this ring. When I go to it and I touch it, to pull it out to look at it, there's weird energy. I mean, like uh, weird technological um, light beams that kind of come down. Um, it's almost like um, bait, baiting you to trap you. Um, so they give you something that looks very alluring. You go to this alluring thing to take it and then they trap you. Um, so that's what this next message is. And, uh, 
so there's all these like rays of light coming out. It's very technological feeling and it's making my hands very cold to experience it. I tell the light beams it's okay because what you really need is not a bait. Um, what you need is help. And I'm here to help you. And I'm not talking to you, the client. I'm not talking to you, the golem that has been so stretched thin with too much. It's those ones that are stretching you thin that need help, okay? They need to self-realize because um, they need to heal. <sighs> Hmm. It's a very questionable moment right now. Because I don't really know what to do here. I mean, this ring isn't real. It was just an idea. Because what this was about was sending you some really great ideas um, and then trapping you. So the ring never was real. It was a, it was a trap. It was just a trap. And I'm just sort of standing here. I'm still looking at the ring for some reason. I don't, I didn't really care anymore about this technological energy. I just, I'm just trying to make sense of what to do here. I mean, it's kind of a weird feeling. Almost like death happened. It's like a creepy, it's not a funeral. It's almost like being in a creepy cemetery but you're lost for words because there's an eerie silence in the feeling of death and that's what it's like in here so what do we do when things feel like this we change the energy um you ever been in a room where it's way too quiet so you just start laughing for no reason <laughs> somebody needs to break the silence come on man <laughs> i could be that person <laughs> so so i'm gonna be that person for you <laughs> it's like wow it's way too like serious in here so somebody's gonna have to start laughing because this is just too serious <laughs> so i'm gonna do that i'm just gonna laugh and i'm just gonna say you know what it's time to be happy it's time to be jolly Let's not look at what was. Let's not live in the past. Let's not see the trap. And let's, it, we don't have to be feel stretched thin because we can take our life and we can transform it into a new experience. So Gollum can be reborn, okay? So that the stretched thin experience that we've been through can become um, new and liberating. So, um, so it's time now. It's time now for this. And I'm just sharing this joyful message like a messenger from God, like a G Gabrielle, the angel messenger, you know? It's time. It's time. And it's celebrational. It feels like a celebration. And, uh, and I feel like a trumpet, um, a trumpet calling um, for angels to come and celebrate in this space um, and to alleviate the terror because it's done. I mean, that is quite clear that this is done. Don't hold on to the past. Don't hold on to the memories. Don't hold on to any of it. It's done and over like it never happened, okay? Because that's the only way you can step into, truly step into the now is if you have no connection to what was. No connection to it. Um, it's a kind of a weird phenomenon, but you can step into the now and continue to let go of all of your um, attachments to the old memories that have wounded you. It could take a lifetime, but um, we just need to choose to do it. And then we start doing it and we start to feel more liberated, okay? So this energy is really starting to get exciting and happy. And as that's uh, circulating in here, I see um, the golem face with the big freckles. And I actually take peel them off. They're like weird dark green stickers. <laughs> so just peeling them off the face. I say, what? I want you to speak to me. 
And I don't want you to look at me with these like puppy dog eyes. I mean, they're like the sad big golem eyes looking up at me saying, pleading with me to help. Please help me is what they're like. And I say, you need to speak to me. Can't find the voice to speak. Say you gotta conquer yourself, so you gotta conquer this. So you need to speak. You have to speak. No matter what is holding you back from speaking, you control your voice. You speak. He tries to, but there's like a awful gross uh, dark energy, like a foggy steam, but it's thick. And there's a something in the throat and it's like a little person that's toying with all the cords um, in here. And um, so when you try to speak, it's like it's controlled. I say, well, how do you take back control? Do you take back control by just uh, trying to live with it? Or do you take back control by choosing to use your voice that belongs to you? It doesn't belong to anybody else. It belongs to you. It's your voice. Okay. There is so many stabbing, um, and it's not stabbing into, it's like the wound is already in, lodged inside, and it's in my, it's really hurts here, like right here, but it's a spike that goes right into my throat, and then it comes, it's sort of behind my heart portal, and it starts there, and then it comes straight into my throat, and it's like a spike in there, and it hurts, I mean, it hurts in there. You want there to be a celebration. When I was calling all those angels in, sharing that message, that was real to me. But you're telling me that's what you're dreaming will happen. You're waiting for the day when you could be free from this. But I already see that you, the celebration is already happening. But to get to that place that it can actually be real to you, you have to take control you have to take back the control. And I will say, part of taking back the control is you have to work with your psychic gifts because psychic ability is the only way you could be psychically attacked. People who have no clue about the you know, psychic stuff won't be psychically attacked because they don't choose that experience. They don't choose that experience. But those of us who are really connected to the spirit realm... Um, these experiences can happen, right? And the way to uh, face the experience is to use your psychic gifts. You have to look at the attackers. You can see them psychically. You already know what they look like. You already know what they sound like. You already know what they're threatening you with. You already know what they do. And you can feel it in your energy field. So what you need to do is you need to go into an energy space, much like I do, and just stand in a place where you can face them in their own space. So I'm going to give you an example. Closing my eyes, I'm stepping into a space. Um, you're the person that is always saying this threat to me. Um, I want to thank you for literally everything that you've been teaching me. It's been hard. Um, but I don't need your help anymore. Now, what, what always happens because you're dealing with a severe event... That's full of anxiety and trauma. So full of anxiety and trauma that you need to stand your ground. Because that consciousness is going to try to threaten you back. Um, and it's going to feel like you're going to puke. You're going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to feel like they're going to overcome you again. You're going to feel like you're going to regret this. You're going to feel like, why am I doing this right now? But you're taking the control of your body back. So this pest needs to go. And you got to stand your ground, okay? So you, you stand there and you don't back down, all right? Now, when they see that you're not backing down, now you have to do something that you're not going to believe is going to work in your mind, but your soul will know it works. That's why it will work. Um, you're just going to take literally an orb 
or it was just a sphere, okay? But spheres are libraries, infinite universes of information. And in this sphere that you're just going to grab out of thin air, um, your intention is that this sphere is full of the love of all the love of God and the angels and the most beautiful loving alien beings and all the healing fairies and Mother Earth and my divine higher self and all of the meaning of my entire life and all the love that I know and that I have and that I've experienced in all of my lives. Um, this orb is full of this truth. And then you take this orb and you place it into the heart of this one, okay? You literally just put it into them. But they're energy beings. We're denser than their reality. So they're basically invisible to us. We're denser than them. We actually can control them. <laughs> we can psychically attack them. And you got to you got to reorganize your way of thinking here because you have the power to psychically attack this being. But how we psychically attack them is with love. Because the one thing they're terrified of is love. But when we're weak and vulnerable, they want to take, 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 take from us. But when you realize that you, the, it, people can only take what you choose to give, you can even give your life, you know? Don't do that. Because they don't deserve it. They earned it nothing, you know? You give your life to your soulmate kind of thing. Like, I love you so much, I will do anything for you. <laughs> you know, that's what, what that, that's like the good feeling of I dedicate my life to you or something. This is like not okay. This is not acceptable. So you have to, you have the strength and the power. You have to do this. You have to do this, okay? So... So I'm, I'm also doing this, okay? Okay, so we're going to do this together. All right, so the worst one of them all is coming into this space here. Hmm. He doesn't, he's really uh, nervous about me. I mean... He doesn't want me to look at him. Fa he doesn't want to face me. And uh, I choose to see him. You know, I, s I just choose to see him as a weird looking guy. <laughs> this is the image that comes, all right? We just go with what comes. But he's got like a heart-shaped face. And it's blue. And it has lumps on the top. So he has like a um, heart-shaped face. Um, blue heart-shaped face. And then he has like a cape on like Dracula would wear, but he's wearing like kind of a fancy suit or something underneath. Um, not, not what you would expect to see with an alien being, but this is my version um, of the worst one of them all. But see, he doesn't want to face me, so I have to work with something. Um, and, and I define that as the worst one of, of them all. And as I approach him, I will say, your head is moving like it's full of weird, um, like a fish tank that is way too small for a thousand weird eels. That's what it's like in your head, slurging and swerging around in there. And um, they're like a greenish color. And then in the throat too, okay? And I just keep walking towards him. I say, you're this one. You are the one that is, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one. And I tell him that you are going to receive love today. And you're going to feel the love within your heart. And you're going to be understood. And you don't have to be afraid of love. Because love is not going to hurt you. Love is going to heal you and help you understand your own identity in a new way. As I continue to walk forward, I will say your heart is like really lots of energy going on in there. And then your head, um, it's like a lot of movement going on in here. It's almost hard to breathe. Like, oh. I'm almost there. It's almost forcing him to come out. Because his eyes, like there's something weird about his eyes. And the, the real version doesn't look this clean and tidy, okay? Real version looks like a, like a growth. Um, it looks like a weird mold. I mean, that's what it looks like. A mold, a giant um, mold with consciousness. 
Uh, it's kind of a like a brownish, yellowish, greenish color. Um, it has eyes that like kind of like jab of the hut eyes, but it, they seem to like I don't know. I feel like roll eyes rolling around. I say this orb is full of all the love of the universe, and is full of the timeline of liberation for this beautiful person who is ready to move on with his life. This orb is full of all of the meaning of what love is and what love can be and how love can heal and nurture your very soul. This is the power of love that I hold within my hand and this love now is a part of you. So I'm placing this love within the heart of this mold thing. But the thing is, everything has a, an essence of a heart portal because we're all connected, okay? So we just put it in what your intention of this is the heart of this thing so you just put it in there so it's in there and i put one into the third eye crown the mental body space okay and i tell them when they say you're doing a really great job i know i know part of your role and part of your purpose is has been hurting um this beautiful human being and soul um, but your divine time is changing and your calling is changing. And so it's time for you to um, receive this download of awareness so that you now can be explore a new pathway. So I'm placing yet another orb um, into uh, the throat of this one, okay? Because I'm going to put it into all the energy bodies. And I put one oh, into the emotional gut of this one. Oh. <sighs> this is just your energy moving as I'm doing this, okay? So I have a really good feeling. So now I'm going to put this into the sexual body of this, this one. And instantly when I put it into the sexual body of this one, it starts to puke up um, this mold thing. starts to puke up a lot of black goo. Um, and it doesn't feel like can, it can move or run away from me. It's forced to. It's like actually stuck to a wall is what it's like. So it's forced to receive. I mean, it literally is forced to receive. And it's um, it can't leave. And uh, so I say, I'm going to place this in your root. And I'm going to connect your root to your earth star chakra. <sighs> I know we're talking about an alien being, but they are no, they are just, we are just as connected to them as they are to us. And we can do this however we want to do this. And this is powerful. Okay. So if I want him to have an earth star chakra, he has an earth star chakra and he's going to receive love in that chakra and it's going to transform him. So and I'm placing this in his earth star chakra, this orb of love, and we're going to bring the root on down. Okay, this is getting interesting. I'm going to put one more orb here into the soul star chakra, and then I'm going to bring the crown up into the soul star chakra, and we're going to expand the energy field of this one. And uh, he looks so sick. I mean, he, he's like throwing up a black goop, and uh, he looks sick. And I see his bones are... Um, it's like he's got weird, uh, I, like as I was putting these in, it was like it was showing me bones developing and like a bone that goes up and a bone that goes down um, and these bones that come across and uh, he just looks absolutely sick. And uh, I literally take this space and I just put it into an orb. Um, the space where his consciousness exists, where this attacker's consciousness exists. And I just put it into an orb. And then this orb of all the love of all, all the meaning of the love of all, I just place it into his space completely. So now he is within the love of all. And then I hand this orb over to Archangel Metatron. Just want to see what your energy field is like now. I will say there's definitely energy shifts, major energy shifts going on here. 
Um, there's more stuff stuck to you. Um, some sort of splat. I mean, it's like a gack. Somebody splatted it on you, and it's head to toe, and it's black, and it's, it's like a splat, and it's completely all around the front side of you. And it's like a slime, like a thick slime, and I'm just pulling it off of you. But as I pull it off, it's apparently like super glued to your skin because your skin is ripping off as I pull it off. So I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to rip your skin off with it. We're going to explore a different method. This thing has been, uh, I mean, this is yet another layer of your suffering here. And it's like the ultimate energy parasite because it's like its mouth is completely over your entire front of all your energy bodies, okay? Our energy bodies are on the backside too, but there's something about it being on the front. And it's like suffocate. It's like even over your mouth, so it's like suffocating you. I'm just going to touch it with love. And I'm just going to send the love of all and all the love of the love of all. It's really helping to open your heart up. So I'm just sending all the love of the love of all. All the love of the love of all. All the love of the love of all. Yeah. All the love of the love of all. 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 Suddenly you start speaking. Gollum doesn't look like Gollum anymore. Gollum looks like a reflection of you. And you start saying all the love of the love of all. All the love of the love of all. And I say all the love of the love of all. And even all the souls that feel like saying all the love of the love of all are also saying it. And there's a lot of energy building here. I mean, there's a big, beautiful participation in helping you. And I start to hear many voices say all the love of the love of all. All the love of the love of all. All the love of the love of all. And it all starts to circulate more and more around you. Um, and you're in the center of so many beautiful um, speakers, so many beautiful souls that love you. Um, you're also in the crowd of us saying it to yourself. <laughs> and we're just surrounding you with love. And we're back in that space where we started, where the ring was, and then the celebration happening, right? All the love of the love of all. All the love of the love of all is here. All the love of the love of all. It's within and around you. It's above and below you. It's in every sacred direction. All the love of the love of all. All the love of the love of all. All the love of the love of all. Whew. That feels good. <sighs> this is changing the throat. Um, there's something weird happening here with the back of the head. But huge improvements. Mental body also has a little bit of a strain. And there's just some, some exhaustion here around the forehead, the eyes. Okay? Like that. No. God. Ah. When I stretch, that's me that experiencing you releasing a lot of energy. And that's quite a lot of good stretches in there. It's really good because um, these type of experiences can make you feel like a piece of paper that's been crumpled up into a tiniest little ball. And you can't stretch out and you're feeling more and more confined. And so getting your energy field to expand for you to stretch is going to give you power. Because you can't get crammed into a tiny little ball. You need to be um, the universe. You know, you're big and bold. So that's what you need to be. Okay. All right. So the next thing, I, I mean, there's something yet uh, deeper here, okay? This is a uh, black rock. 
but it's uh, there's a lot going on on the inside of this. It's a big thing, and uh, I would say the best placement for it would be over your digest digestive region, so emotional gut, sexual body region. Um, it's like completely across there. <sighs> More movement. <laughs> it's really good though. I'm just going deeper in here, into the space. Gosh, this thing is like, it's just like, it's a weird, it's like cancer, a cancer's tumor, but it's a rock and it's massive. And this, you can't just like, you just can't just, you know, remove this one. I mean, you got to use a jackhammer or something like, you're going to have to use some, something special to get this out. That's kind of what it's like. That's how big of a deal this is. Okay, so in this deeper layer, this rock is here, and then there's something about your heart. This whole space is kind of emanating that it's uh, become a solid, like a rock, an immovable, like rock body. So it's like uh, you're stuck because you're a rock, you know? Rocks aren't don't have arms and legs, they stay in one place kind of thing. And I can see your rib cage, and I can see your heart, um, I can see your bones, the outline of your body, your head, um, your eyes are strange. You have a third eyeball, I mean you do, and then you have eyes here, but they don't look like eyeballs, I don't know how to describe this, it looks strange to me. Something strange about the eyes. And you're in, you're like carved into a rock. You're almost like dinosaur bones. Um, so when they find the dinosaur bones, they start to kind of excavate around the bones and then go dig beneath the surface of the bones to lift them up and out so that get bones are preserved. So you're like that. And I got to go dig underneath you to lift you up and out. But you're not dinosaur bones. You're not made out of bones. You're not made out of rock. Um, so none of this is correct. None of this is correct. So, so we've got we've to gotta transform this entire image here. <laughs> Um, you tell me this is going to hurt. Why are you doing this to me? It's almost like um, you're speaking to me as though I'm like like somebody that's harming you, but I'm actually helping you. Um, but it's, it's like, have you said, I mean, it's almost like this has been said so many times. You're hurting me, you're hurting me kind of thing. Um, it's, in, it's echoing in here. You're hurting me, you're hurting me. And this is me um, focusing on bringing this black rock up and out. Um, so it's what you're, that's what the echo is right now. I just draw, I don't, apparently I'm drawing some ancient symbols on here on the rock. I'm just like drawing them in with my finger and golden, um, I'm just golden writing them onto this rock here that is lodged inside of you and acts much like a cancerous tumor that will never be removed. That's basically what it's acting like. Okay, something weird is coming out of it. It's like a, a ch melted cheese, but it's a black. It's kind of like the black goop that was uh, covering the front of you, but it's a it's like kind of slinking out of the center of this rock thing. It's slinking out, um, and it's like a stretchy slime, a squishy slime, but it's coming out as black. And I'm just I just uh, visualizing all these symbols on this thing. And I'm visualizing all these symbols literally all over your body. They're just like ancient runes, um, ancient writing, um, magical writing. Like even Reiki symbols are like runes, you know? They're like magical writing. Now I'm just going to put some Reiki symbols in here. Let's just do that. I think that's a great idea. <sighs> Chokurei. Seheki. <sighs> Daikomio. Hon Sha Ze Shonen Tamara Sha. You just put them all in here. Okay. Okay, a lot of aggression coming up and out. A lot of anger. Super loud roaring um, anger coming up and out. So just letting it do that. Chokure. 
And I'm just do I'm just instantly seeing Choku Ray on all your energy bodies. Choku Ray. Say hey ki. Daiko Mio. Hon Sha Ze Shonen. Tamara Sha. Choku Ray. Say hey ki. Daiko Mio. Hon Sha Ze Shonen. Tamara Shah. I'm just doing this. And it is like it's kind of making you feel delirious and uh, starting to break the rock apart. And it's not just this rock, it's literally all the rock that was defined as you. you. And it's starting to break it all up. Chokure, Sehe Ki, Daiko Mio, Hon Sha, Ze Sho, Nen. Tamara Shah. Hmm. <laughs> just pushing out more energy, which is really good. <sighs> All right, I'm going to let this continue to circulate in this space, okay? I just want to go to the next thing and see what happens. Wow, you're like energetically delirious. Like there's weird vibrations of energy like all over head to toe. It's like, whoa, 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 like dizzy energy, but it's good. It's a good feeling. It's like a wobbly good feeling and, and energetically vibrating throughout you. Um, there's an exhaustion that's kind of like, I'm too tired. I'm just so tired. And how do you find the strength when you have no strength left to walk? I mean, that's the ultimate question. How do you find the strength when you have no strength left to walk? Um, you just keep persevering, you know? I mean, you got to pull the energy from somewhere. So I take this part of you and I give this part of you a hug. You actually look like an old, like, Roman soldier that's uh, made out of bones and it's just been walking in a wintry, like, desert. It's like a, a wintry desert um, for, like, eternity. That's what it, I mean, you look like this. And the snow just keeps blowing like a sandstorm. And you look like a Roman, you have Roman soldier attire, um, but you're made out of bones. Say so you can stop walking now. I mean, have you taken a look in the mirror? You're made out of bone. This is a deep part of yourself um, this is a, a soul. This is a frequency of some kind, and this frequency is talking to me about how exhausted you are. So I have to talk to the frequency in order for the frequency itself to self-realize and to change, or in order for you to feel better. Okay. So. Okay, as I talk to this part of you, some sort of big man comes up and out of the snow, sort of climbing, like super massive, walks over this mountain. I can hear it feels the earth shaking with every step he takes. But, I mean, he just doesn't have any power. I mean, he can be as threatening as he wants. He just can't. There's nothing he, this, this guy can do. I mean, there's literally nothing. And, uh... He, this, uh, this creation, this giant, is uh, the fury of the, the wintry desert, is the fury of all this infinite time of torture, um, is um, torturing you to the bone. I mean, that's what this all is, and this, all of this is related to this giant. Mm, the whole scene changes and you're now like in 
Ugh, it's like really cool looking in here. It's an underground cavern full of jewels and gold pieces. I mean, it's like a pirate's treasure, like hidden treasure. It's huge. There's so much treasure here. But you're a skeleton with a pirate, like a pirate hat thing on. I mean, you're like a skeleton in pirate attire. Standing over all this gold. No, this is really again doing a lot of delirious movement around the heart and the the back of the neck and around the back of the head. It's like a man. It's very it's very peacefully exhausting, um, and this has a lot to do with when we start to shed all of the the suffering frequencies. All the other frequencies start to be like, wow, I'm putting so much energy into surviving. I don't have to survive. Oh, I'm going to nap, you know. <laughs> so this exhaustion is like, I'm going to nap. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. It's a very wonderful feeling. And it is exhausting. We're almost through this uh, frequency here because again, uh, we're working with illusions. So the ring wasn't real, it was a booby trap. <laughs> the this snowstorm thing isn't real either. Um, it's all a f an illusion that feels very real. This, the gold coins and all this stuff also isn't real. So we have a suffering skeletal person in different places, but none of those places are real and this person isn't made out of just bone. I mean, so there's something about some acknowledgement of some version of truth that is outside of what feels like the truth, <laughs> if you can understand that. So if I if I look like a skeleton pirate and I'm in a pirate's treasure area, then I must be a pirate in a pirate's treasure area, right? No. <laughs> I know it's so weird because it's like I look like I'm abnormal. I think I'm abnormal. I guess I'm abnormal, right? Um no. <laughs> you're an infinite soul. You're a, you know, you're a so many things. But this is a this is the frequency talking here. This is okay something is breaking apart and you actually understand me inside yourself you understand me deep down because I can feel uh, like a key just turned and a door open um, and a lot of breaking down of the energies that are, have gone we're even this deep breaking down energies and it's all about breaking down illusions so you can get your power back, okay? Again, exhaustion. Uh, a huge wave of exhaustion. It's not my exhaustion, it's your energy field. Because it's pro been processing so much. <laughs> it's been processing so much. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay, I'm going to take a moment to disconnect. <sighs> and I'm going to go to get the next thing, okay? There's literally nothing else... I'm going to be able to get out of there. It's just simply too, I mean, it's almost to a sleep state. So I'm going to go to the next thing. Hmm. Okay, so I become you and I'm stepping, I'm like literally walking upstairs and there's a really awful basement and all these like awful things that these shadowy things are saying and you just have to keep walking and they all they convince you that the stairs are slippery you'll fall back down and hurt yourself and then you'll come back to us 
and we'll be ready for you. We'll be ready for you. And you just say, I don't know what you're talking about. In fact, well, I guess I'm talking to myself. I, I thought I heard something. Oh, yeah, I just seem to get up these stairs. We're not going to pay any attention to anything else but walking up these stairs. That's the only thing that we know is real, is walking up these stairs and getting to the next phase of our life. It has nothing to do with anything we've ever thought was our reality up until this point. Because the only thing that is real is what is happening right now, this instant, and I'm just going to walk up these stairs, and that's all I know. You need to walk upstairs. This is creating a heartbeat within you, but it still feels really groggy. <sighs> stairs are many. It seems like we're so far down. And it's like not enough energy to get up all the stairs to get out of here. And it's like we're trapped here forever because we just simply don't have enough energy to get ourselves out. And this is a bit strange, but... It's like the Wicked Witch of the West. It looks just like her green face and all. Um, she isn't riding a broomstick though. She's riding a magic carpet and it's black. And she comes to where we are. And she does not feel like she's here to uh, hurt you or poke fun or anything like that. She's here to help. Hmm, she's sort of laughing a bit to herself. She's like, so you took the ring for bait. Um, the beautiful golden, this beautiful shiny ring. And you're going to take me, the Wicked Witch of the West, for bait. <laughs> I was like, um, sometimes we just got to see what our options are and then just see what happens. But I don't see a Wicked Witch of the West. I just see a woman with some green face paint on um, in a flying carpet. Um, I don't see evil here with you. Hmm. She uh, finds that an intriguing response. She says, why, why would I come and help you? Why would I come and help you? She looks at us both. Because I'm here helping you get up these stairs. Why would I ever come down here to help you? I say, well, you did come down here to help us. Do we need to know why? I mean, if we needed to know why, why, why don't you just tell us why? Some emotion, there's anger. It's almost like, uh, I'm just going to throw this out there. It's going to sound a little crazy. What if, in another lifetime, you scorned um, a woman. <laughs> this is what it's like. Uh, just hear me out, okay? We're gonna just we'll just try this out, okay? This is what is echoing to me right now. So I see you in another lifetime. You scorned this woman. And the soul of this woman never forgave you. And she created a curse or whatever you want to call it. Like she created an earthquake, um, a frequency ripple. Um, that manifest a circumstance where you would be ripped apart. Um, and then she then would get to watch you suffer because she wanted to watch you suffer the way that you made her suffer. But in the end, there's only suffering. So the woman scorned, what is her lesson to be learned? And scorning the woman, what is your lesson to be learned? In the end... Let's just get over ourselves. We all make mistakes. We all think we're doing the right thing. And then we do, you know, it just, it's, we make choices and we're learning from those choices. We forgive each other and let's just keep growing already. And so this is the echo she shares as to why, why she is here and why would she ever come to help you? When, and so when she starts to feel sad, it's like, why do we have to know why? Just, if you need us to know why, will you please tell us so we can reconcile whatever this is? And then she starts to cry, and that is in, within a split second, she shows me all this information. And it's almost like she ended up punishing herself um, to watch you be punished. But it also um, was the one thing her soul felt would be the one thing that would heal her. And so it's quite strange because um, the only thing that will heal her is helping you. It's funny how things work out. And souls have experiences 
incarnate and and i mean souls have experience even in the spirit realm we seem to think souls just just go on their merry way and they never have another learning experience um, they only learn when they're incarnating. You no know, souls learn even right after death, even what we would define as ten minutes after death, even what we would define as a hundred years after they died in that form. You know, so souls are always learning all over the place. So this is a learning experience. And I say, so oh, so she was a witch, huh? And he scorned her. This, what's up with the witches? Something about the witch energy, the magic energies right now. This is becoming a theme here. <laughs> it's kind of cool, actually. I love magic. <laughs> hmm. Okay. You are standing up to her. Like, literally standing up, and she's still on the carpet looking at you. And, uh... You don't look... You look, uh... You have a very, I mean, you have so many bo boisterous clothes on. I mean, very colorful, velvet and buttons and silk. And then you have a very, what seems like a small head in comparison to all these clothes, these layers. Um, and it's bald head and uh, orangish colored mustache. And uh, <laughs> you have a very distinctive appearance. I mean, um, you look distinctive. And uh, you're standing up like this. And so she's just looking at you and you're looking at her. And uh, she echoes another image of her slapping you in the face. And then she uh, echoes another image and uh, she cannot let go of her hate. And so she now is showing, she's showing another scene where she now has you and she's going to punish you for this so it, none of this is real just so you know it's just playing out um frequencies so she's taking you into a space um it's all dark in here and dingy um and she has all the power and you have nothing nothing that's what she's like. She's like this. Um, so now, you, you know, this r rich, boisterously dressed, uh, you know, person, you know, now I own you. Now I own you. You know, she's like. Um, and you're on the dirt floor and she is so threatening. But I tell you, you know what? You need to own your own choices and let it go. And she needs to learn her lesson too about learning through other people's choices. I mean, don't hold grudges. It's not worth it. So you need to stand up and you need to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I hurt you. At that time, I was doing what I was trained to do in that lifetime. It was my role. It was what I understood. So I'm sorry. She can't, um, she can't accept sorry, so she takes a knife and stabs it into your heart. But I'm helping you in saying, um, there's nothing she can do to hurt you. She can stab you all day long. She can stab me all day long. She literally has no power here. Because she's working with anger and wounds. And we're working with love and, and forgiveness of self. Forgiveness of others and forgiveness. And there's power in that. There's absolute power in that. There's no power when you're working in your wounded state. And so we need to be bigger than her, bigger than the experiences. We need to be the bigger one to reach our hand out and say, let me help you. In a way, I wasn't able to help you in that life. <sighs> Something is changing here. Something is definitely changing here. It's very exhausting on my mind. Uh, my throat's feeling circulation, my heart, my stomach, um, very exhausting, but um, very powerful. Um, energy is kind of rippling up the back of my head right now. I say it's time to go. So either she'll accept it or she won't, but we don't have to stay in her experience. We didn't have to in the first place. 
But what this tells me is something about your choice um, stayed with you and you carried an element of guilt or memory. So that way her soul then, her soul's dream or infatuation to hurt you the way you hurt her, but taking it to extremes, right? <clears throat> you know, um, so that's why you became entangled in that because you did feel guilt. Um, and so that's why she was able to punish you. And s that's all a part of this whole big thing. I know we're talking about alien stuff, but there's also ripples in our circulating timelines that also um, encourage the memories to circulate around until they can be resolved, healed, and released. So this is also bringing this weed up and out so we can look at this and let it go. So a part of the suffering you're enduring is part of the suffering you felt that you deserved for um, in a lifetime. How many lifetimes are wo interwoven into this experience that you're having, okay? There's going to be a lot of different lifetimes interwoven into this. But one of them is a guilt that you're still hanging on to and that you deserved to be punished. And so your soul is still... Um, choosing to feel punishment when really you just need to forgive yourself and let it go. You don't need to be punished anymore. So let's see. I say you have no attachment to the soul. This soul now is it's up to the soul to work on its own stuff. So for some reason this gives you a lot of strength. And I say no more of this feeling like an infinite stair that we're never going to get to the top of, that it's just impossible. No more, because you, you, you seem to have decided that um, freedom from this is an impossible thing. It's not. Um, so let's stop walking up the stairs and say we've reached the top already, because you can be done with this anytime. You can be done with this. I will say your energy field actually feels better this time than when I first stepped into it. I will say that was a really hard session because there were so many foul energies and so many broken energies. Um, there's a lot of anxiety energies in there, um, a lot of suffering and energies, uh, but it's not like that. Um, yeah, there's definitely energy stuff going on here, but there's a lot of... Um, it's not debilitating. I mean, I'm able to breathe in here. It was debilitating in the last session. So this is major improvement. Really major. This uh, is full of opportunity and, f and liberation. I mean, it feels like liberation is, right, is there. I mean, we're there with it. You just have to realize you've reached liberation. And I, I don't know, something's clicking here. And just feel it out, okay? So, you have psychic ability. Again, only psychic people can be psychically attacked. Um, we're all psychic people, but there's different levels of openness to having psychic experiences. So, um, you're open to having psychic experiences, so that's how this type of stuff happens. This is an interesting idea that just wiggled its way up to the surface. Just decide if you want to try it or not. Um, you could psychically communicate with other reflections of love and ask them to help you too and um, receive messages as well. Now, it's important that you learn how to receive messages from the spirit realm um, so you don't get tricked again, okay? With a really lustrous ring, um, you don't need to get tricked or trapped or anything like that um, because you have to have the communication in your heart because it'll feel like love. And they never actually talk to you. They never tell me anything in my head. They always share feelings and images with me, and that's all I need to make sense of so much information. Um, so um, you're going to you need to start feeling messages in your heart that are coming through, and you don't need to name who these the spirits are. It doesn't have to be specifically, you know, 
Archangel Michael or Archangel whoever. Um, it could just be your higher self. It could be um, spirit guide. We don't know who they are. They don't need to have a name for us to be, receive their love and guidance, you know. So instead of listening to anything in your head or whatever you might be experiencing, um, just silence all that, right? I mean, I'm really feeling your energy field substantial improvement here, okay? Um, but listen to your heart and ask your heart, can you help me understand what the next thing is for me? Um, can you help me understand? And just, even if you don't hear a message, just allow the love in your heart to just be felt. Because that is the message. That too can be the message. The heart, you need to continue to brighten your heart, brighten the strength and the love within you. Um, there's nothing else that you need to resolve or reconcile. There's no more punishment. Um, you're, you've completed this experience. So allow yourself to become bright again and work with the feeling of love. Work with the feeling of love. Okay? You can do it. Mm-hmm. You can just see what I just want to step back and I mean I have gone so into so many layers, layers, layers. Let me just step back for a minute. Well, I will say you're you look really tired. Um you look like you need a nap and energy work can definitely energy work has a way of making us feel tired because our bodies are changing and so we have to process those changes. So we need naps and water, you know? This would be really great after energy work. Um, if you're feeling sleepy, nap, you know? Um, drink water. Just take it easy. Just let your body process it in whatever way it wants to process it. Just take it easy. This is like, you need to take it easy. So you may feel like on the sleepier side after this session. Uh, I just want you to be brighter than this. And I mean, the vibrationally, the flow of energy is, is, is great in comparison to where we started, but it's, it was still phenomenal um, from where I started in the last session. So, I, so we're like leaps and bounds ahead here. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to place a beautiful candle of light here in your heart. Okay, venting out some emotion. Because we got to get, I just want you to be a little bit brighter than this. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm placing candle of light in your th mental body, in your throat, in your emotional gut, your sexual body, in your root, in your crown. <sighs> A lot of movement. Yeah, this is, you're looking brighter. That's a lot better. I like that better. Um, I'm just going to circulate the energy around here. So I really want to brighten up your energy field. That's not, that looks more natural to me. Hmm. I can still tell that you've got, um, I mean, amazing improvements going on here, but I can tell that what you've been through has really been a lot for you. And so... Um, I see so much improvement, but I, I, I mean, you look like a, a doll that was made out of stuffing and you just kind of like, you just more, you just exhausted. And so to rebuild our energy, then we just let this energy work circulate. Okay. And use the tips that I'm sharing in here. Um, and this might actually alleviate on its own, but use the tips if you need to okay and it'll give you your strength back 
and you won't have to try to become bright you just naturally will be bright and it's okay if you want to ask your heart what suggestions it has um, th this is what I got for you okay thank you so much for exploring this follow-up session with me thank you for sharing as well uh, there's people that need help like this and and they're gonna find this type of information very helpful um, in this session so I want to thank you for that um, and for um, those of you watching if you would like to work with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com thank you all again and I wish you all a wonderful day